it implies that the amount of heat amount of energy one should have it's a, uh, it's determined by the levels of t3 t4 so in short t3 t4 is fuel for your body just like diabetes when we say glucose glucose is fuel for your body so the rate at which glucose is going to be utilized is determined by the levels of t3 t4 i hope you understand that yes i think that talk about types of thyroid when we talk yeah. about thyroid types there's no type it's only one thyroid gland and this is its job now what can happen is functioning of the gland can fluctuate uh, someone can have a thyroid functions which are bang normal if the thyroid is functioning normal sometimes the factory can work less when the factory works less we call it as hypothyroid when the thyroid is working more or an overactive thyroid gland we call it as hyperactive hyperthyroid so it's it's the functioning of the gland which is underactive or overactive accordingly we say hypothyroid or hyperthyroid respectively okay i think thank you so much for the clarification and thank you for the explanation of how the thyroid gland works uh, mm -hmm. because a lot of it is sort of just like iodine is needed and stuff like that so i think that explains a lot um okay uh, so you just touched base upon like hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism but uh, if if you have to talk about the symptoms of it like uh, how do you uh, identify if it's a hypo or hyperthyroidism or do you only need or you can only identify it when you go to a doctor so uh, understand you know thyroid disorders are far more common than diabetes let me tell you very fact so let's get mm -hmm. uh, except that when we talk about diabetes what is the incidence of diabetes it's around 8 10% in metros probably 13 to 15% right uh if you were to look at uh, thyroid disorders the incidence is somewhere around 20% that is far more common thyroid dysfunctions are far more common than diabetes but still we talk about diabetes more the reason being diabetes itself is a dreaded disease and it leads to a lot of complications yeah. thyroid in that way is far more benign compared to diabetes because yes in the long run it does cause complications it can affect but uh, it it does not actually lead to premature deaths diabetes can thyroid does not so at least that's the saving factor over here that if you have a thyroid dysfunction at least yes it's more common it's not uncommon you're not the only one there's no feeling of dejection or anything of that sort you should have and then it's it's something which is easily controllable manageable so at least there's some you know saving zone to it uh now your question was what are the symptoms of thyroid dysfunction now as i told you uh, when we talk about thyroid dysfunction we talk about either an underactive gland or an overactive gland right. underactive means uh, underactive gland is far more common than overactive when i say underactive what do i mean i mean hypothyroid hypo means thyroid is working less hyper means thyroid is working more now so hypothyroid is far more common than hyperthyroid the incidence of hypothyroid is probably 20% whereas hyperthyroid would be about 1 to 2% so hyper hyperfunctioning of the gland is far less common compared to hypofunctioning let's come to symptoms you asked me a question of what are the symptoms well i'll explain you in simple language hypothyroid hypofunctioning of the gland if it's functioning less if the thyroid works less obviously the factory is working less production of t3 t4 is going to be less so obviously if the t3 t4 production is going to be less implies that blood levels of t3 t4 are going to be low now as i said t3 t4 are like fuel for your body so if t3 t4 levels are low it's like a low fuel state low voltage if you have low voltage current obviously you cannot switch on the air conditioner or a fridge all you can do is start the small bulbs right because the voltage is less on the other side if you see if there's less fuel fuel uh, the vehicle will go with jerks 
Similarly, when the levels of T3, T4 are low in hypothyroidism, your metabolism slows down. So everything in the body is going to slow down. So people will complain of fatigue, lethargic, sleepy. They don't sweat, so skin becomes dry. You know, they tend to lose hair. Intestines move slowly, so people get constipated. Body heat is less. So whatever they eat is not burnt. So the weight goes up. Body heat is less. So they cannot generate heat. So they cannot withstand air conditioned environment for a long time. People get cramps, you know, swelling in the legs, bloated feeling, menses become irregular, so on and so forth. Lower the T3, T4, greater the problems. The exact opposite happens in hyperthyroidism. In hyperthyroidism, it's a hyperactive or overactive gland. So it will grab all the iodine manufacture more t3 t4 if the t3 t4 production is more obviously the blood levels of t3 t4 will go up and it's like a high fuel state so everything will become fast you know your heart beats fast so you have palpitations blood pressure goes up you're restless you're hyper you're irritable cannot sleep you know you want everything fast body heat is more okay so you feel feverish your appetite goes up but because the heat is more the fat melts so the weight goes down Okay, intestines move fast, so your frequency of motion increases. So, I mean, exact opposite of what you would see in hypothyroidism. So, these are the usual symptoms that patients complain of or individuals complain of. I don't like the term patients, but individuals. Okay, I think that that helps a lot in understanding because there's so much misconception when it comes about thyroidism, right? Like issues related to thyroid. Uh, we tend to just ignore them that it is just regular weakness or stuff like that. And I've seen the same cases in my family as well. So I know. And it's the last thing in anyone's mind to go and get tested for thyroid. Like like what, what issues then they have. So this brings me to another question. is like, um, what are the tests that you recommend? Like if, if someone wants to do a self-check uh, in a path lab. So I think uh, the test that you need to do is something called as T3, T4, which I've already explained to you and another hormone called as TSH. Very routinely, TSH is a hormone which people check when they want to check thyroid. What is TSH? TSH is a hormone which comes from the brain. There's a small uh, peanut-sized gland called as pituitary, which is part of the brain, about two inches deep between two eyes. So this is as small as peanut, but it controls the entire body. It produces a hormone called as T. SH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So TSH comes from the pituitary, which goes and stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T3, T4. So when you're looking at thyroid functions, you check T3, T4, TSH to see everything is fine or not. Sometimes one can get away with by doing only TSH. The TSH levels are normal. That means the brain is sensing the internal environment is fine. Everything is fine. So in hypothyroid, on that note, I'll just take it forward. In hypothyroid, when the T3, T4 levels go down, TSH will go up. Because brain will sense that the levels of T3, T4 are low. So the brain will obviously make an attempt to stimulate the thyroid gland. So TSH will go up. On the other side, in hyperthyroid, when the thyroid is working more, T3, T4 levels are high. And the brain says it's already working more. Why should I stimulate? There's no need. So the TSH goes down. So there's an inverse correlation between T3, T4 and TSH. When T3, T4 are low, TSH will go up. When T3, T4 are high, TSH will go down. Okay. Um, also, what would be the frequency of getting this test done? Like we people living with diabetes, we usually get this routine blood test done. Now, if I want to add it in my list of routine tests, uh, how often do I get checked for thyroid? Okay. So, uh, diabetic patients are more prone to develop thyroid dysfunction. So, one should check it at the start, right? Start at the time of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we talk about diabetes, in type 2 diabetes, the dictum is one should check it once in 2 to 3 years. Okay. For type 2. But type 1 being an autoimmune condition, hypothyroidism being itself autoimmune. That means uh, the occurrence is far more in type 1 compared to type 2. 
So type 1 individuals, I would say, should get their thyroid functions checked every year, annually. And obviously, okay. if it's abnormal, then you need to consult and start medications accordingly. Okay. Okay. I think that brings us to the next question is the treatment for thyroid dysfunctions. Like uh, what, what, what is uh, something that the doctors commonly uh, ask patients to take? And that is also one of the questions in the, by the uh, community members. Okay. So, so when we talk about treatment, understand in hypothyroidism, thyroid is working less. So since the gland is working less, producing less T3, T4, obviously your body needs it. It can, your thyroid cannot manufacture. So treatment is nothing but provide T3, T4 from outside, supplement it from outside. I would not call it as supplement, but I would call it as a replacement because internal production is not happening. So you give it from outside. So the tablet that people are usually on is nothing but extract of, is nothing but T4 which in the body gets converted into T3. So, you know, your T3, T4 levels go up, uh, the problems reduce. And if the dose is appropriate, brain says now the levels are normal. So the TSH comes down. That is as far as hypothyroid is concerned. So you replace T4. Some cases one can consider replacing even T3. But by and large, it's T4 which has been given because the body has the capacity to convert it into T3. When we talk about hyperthyroidism where the thyroid is working more producing unnecessary extra t3 t4 all we do is give medications to reduce the production of t3 t4 so we are applying brakes your car is moving your factory is working more so we apply brakes with medicines and we give these medications for a period of one half to two years just okay. so as to reduce the production of t3 t4 got it uh, also one uh, question related to this so so what are the consequences you know of uh, diabetes because of uh, thyroid issues so uh, understand that uh, you know thyroid dysfunction thyroid is a hormone which controls the rate at which glucose should be utilized right so obviously if in hyperthyroidism everything becomes fast so even your glucose levels tend to go up in hypothyroidism, uh, there's a tendency for one to land up with hypoglycemia because the metabolism slows down, so utilization reduces. So uh, these things can happen. They are very closely linked to each other. So when you have an uncontrolled thyroid, which is working more, your glucose levels can go up. On the other side, in hypo, understand, it's very easy to remember, hyper, hyper. Hyperthyroid, hyperglycemia. Hypothyroid, hypoglycemia. I think that really helps us understand in terms of the diabetic <laughs> jargon. <laughs> because I think we all are so used to hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. We all can relate that in a better way, I would say. Okay, another question from the audience I think is relevant here is what should be the range for thyroid? Oh. Mm, the range for thyroid. Now, it would all depend on what you're looking at. You're looking at T3, T4 or you're looking at TSH. As I said, by and large, what with routine practice, what we do is monitor the TSH levels. Getting a TSH done is far more cheaper you know, mm -hmm. than doing T3, T4, TSH. T3, T4 would cost 500 bucks, whereas TSH can cost 250 only. So, and you can get a fair good of idea that by TSH, if things are normal or not. So, if you look at distribution of TSH as per the age, the range varies. By and large, the range is 0.5 to up to 4.5 in most labs. I repeat, TSH range is 0.5 to 4.5 in most labs. But younger the individual, lower the TSH. As age advances, your TSH normally drifts up. So it would be on the upper end of normal, 4.5, 5. For someone who's at 60, 70, a TSH of 6 and 7 is also acceptable. It may be out of the range, but it is acceptable for that age because normally it goes up with age. Okay. okay. And uh, there was one question uh, in the chat. It says that uh, when you say about uh, body generates heat, so what exactly does it mean? And uh, is there any catabolic or anabolic process that happens? 
so obviously the body in in the body the body is nothing but a dynamic state you know catabolism anabolism both happen together obviously in the growth phase in a young kids the anabolic phase is far more than the catabolic phase okay so this is happening at any given time points you said body generate heat means thermogenesis you 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 see your internal core body temperature is far more than the external surface temperature right right that is far more you check your temperature in the armpit versus your oral temperature you will always find the oral temperature is 1 degree higher than the external armpit mm. so internal heat is because of uh, processing of food maintenance of milieu so it's the thermogenic effect which is there okay there's another question that are there any other tests apart from t3 t4 tsh that will come under thyroid profile and if yes uh, how frequently are these supposed to be done oh, so t3 t4 tsh is uh, good enough by and large i would say there are some specific tests i mean you know it depends on what you are looking at uh, you can do antibody levels to figure out whether the thyroid dysfunction is autoimmune or not you can do a thyroid a sonography especially in patients with thyroid lumps or nodules as we call it as you can sometimes do a thyroid scan so called technician scan to look at whether how the lump is hot or cold these are uh, i mean i would leave it to a, a specialist but by and large uh, t3 t4 tsh is self sufficient i would say yes uh, one of the other things which people can ask me is you know what is free t3 what is free t4 you know when we talk about thyroid function some people say t3 t4 tsh some people say free t3 free t4 tsh this is uh, sometimes uh, an important and important point i would like to clear mm -hmm. uh, understand when uh, thyroid gland manufactures t3 t4 some stock is stored in the gland and some is released in blood now in the blood see remember t3 t4 are protein based hormones in the blood these get broken down immediately and if they are broken down they will not work so what they do is as soon as t3 t4 comes out they bind to some other big proteins okay like so called tvg or albumin so that they are not broken and only a fraction 0.3% or even less is in circulation in the free form now it is that free form which is acting at a cellular level when i say t3 t4 i am measuring the bound form as well as the free form but if you see free form which is active which can act at a cellular level so sometimes you can measure free levels only why so because there are certain conditions where the binding protein can reduce or increase and therefore like critically ill patients the binding proteins become low so if your t3 t4 can become low when you measuring t3 t4 you are measuring the bound form as well as the free it's total it's like this you have cash in hand versus fixed deposit right when i say your assets you are looking at fixed deposit as well as cash in hand all together right but if you look the real liquidity is the liquid money that you have which is going to be handy so free form is the hard cash that you have okay which is uh, easily available whereas your total form is everything put together so you can do t3 t4 tsh or free t3 free t4 and tsh i hope i have clarified yes i think thank you for that uh, relational explanation also i think that helps us understand in a better way uh, okay uh, there's one question i can see is how is mercury related to thyroid do we suggest any fruits to remove the toxicity mercury yes i am not sure if uh, this is related or mercury not mercury is not related sorry mercury is not mercury is not related okay uh, and there's another interesting question like um, and and to add to that i would say that uh, if 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 a person is having thyroidism like thyroid issues uh, does that lead to diabetes no so uh, does thyroid dysfunction lead to diabetes no the answer is no 
yes usually they coexist occurrence is far more but does it that cause does thyroid dysfunction cause diabetes no it's okay. usually a, ca a casual association rather than causation okay right so one because does not cause they are usually associated okay because the question in the chat is like if thyroid is corrected can we get rid of diabetes or lower our sugars is it possible so that's why i just wanted to clarify it once that they are not related um, they are associated together but uh, getting rid of one doesn't mean that you'll get rid of the other right. two thanks thanks for the clarification also i have another question uh, from the uh, female perspective is that uh, once you have thyroidism like thyroid issues it for females it especially leads to pcod and that can be a leading cause for type 2 diabetes in women so your thoughts on that again remember uh, pcod thyroid dysfunction diabetes all three put together are metabolic problems you know uh, one does not lead to another they are usually associated they go hand in hand types uh, the root cause i would say is central obesity pcod is seen more with type 2 diabetes not type 1 okay right. thyroid is seen more with uh, type 1 as well as type 2 okay uh if you remove if you remove the visceral fat adipose tissue which is an excess you can get rid of diabetes pcod definitely thyroid may or may not become milder not necessarily okay actually there is one question related to uh, uh metabolic which you spoke about uh, the question is can metabolic syndrome lead to subclinical uh, hypothyroidism and is treated with uh, thyroxine necessary benefit in every case so again kind you, of you it it needs to be seen in a clinical perspective let me tell you very frankly as a clinician as a physician we always would like to treat an individual and not treat reports subclinical hypothyroidism the word itself means subclinical that means there are no clinical symptoms only you see lab related changes when i say lab related changes means tsh is on the upper side t3 t4 is in the normal range that is what subclinical hypothyroidism so in such scenario there are no symptoms there is no clinical features only lab related abnormality so whether to treat a lab report abnormality or not would depend on the individual sitting in front of you so if you feel in younger individuals it sometimes can help there is evidence for me to start treating in these individuals more so if they have antibodies positive means if it is autoimmune then fine i would treat but if it is not autoimmune especially if it's an elderly individual i told you as age goes up tsh goes up normally also so in such scenario why should i treat so it needs to be individualized it's a clinical decision uh, based on what the complaints are one one question yeah the next question also yeah uh, at your disposal <laughs> tell me so prashant will you take the next question also that had come up from the audience as before yes um it is actually the same question you know um it says that i was uh, checking the american academy of endocrinologist guidelines and even they are somewhat uh, vague on this uh how to whether the subclinical hypothyroidism can be reversed with good uh, metabolic control or not so i don't know what you mean by good metabolic control again in that see whenever whenever you talk about reversal i think it's a new terminology which people are yeah. coining diabetes reversal uh, yeah. thyroid reversal i won't be surprised if someone does this as a marketing gimmick let me tell you so i'm clarifying it's a more of a marketing gimmick uh, reversal this terminology is not appropriate we call it in medical parlance remission 
Remission yeah. means uh, this uh, temporary improvement in lab dysfunction. Obviously, if you uh, start living the same way, it this can come back. See, thyroid disorders uh, usually are autoimmune in nature. As of today, in India, the leading cause is autoimmunity. So is it in Western world also. Uh, with good control of metabolic symptoms. I don't know how, what your interpretation of good control will be. I believe that it implies good lifestyle, exercise regimen, weight loss. With weight loss, usually there's some degree of fall in TSH levels. That means TSH levels do go down with weight loss to some extent. But someone who's, you know, overtly hypothyroid where the tsh is very high more than 10 and on medications the dose may come down but practically if it's autoimmune in nature come what may i mean the factory is damaged right so production is not going to happen from inside so you will have to supplement it from outside if it's not autoimmune and if it's very borderline you lose weight Maybe you will achieve some degree of decrease in TSH. Otherwise, majority by and large, as I said, it's autoimmune. So even with good lifestyle, uh, remember autoimmune disorders are more on a rise in people from affluent classes. Okay. I don't know whether you are aware of this, something called as hygiene hypothesis. Okay. I think you all should go, go uh, look it up. It's very interesting hypothesis. And, Surely, uh, it sounds interesting. Uh, you'll understand why autoimmune problems are on a rise, especially in uh, urban cities. I think I would uh, really like to thank you, doctor, for clarifying uh, the reversal and the remission part of it because, uh, uh, like you said, the marketing gimmicks are so in your face that even when you're well educated, even when you know that it's not possible people usually tend to fall for that. And I think hearing it from you, um, from a specialist, I, I think that people will be more accepting of this thought that at times you have to accept that you have to live with the condition uh, by maintaining your lifestyle. And uh, I know it can be tough like to always eat right and exercise and follow a disciplined lifestyle. But again, it is what you have to do. Uh, and I think uh, thank I, you so I, much I, for realizing that. When, when you... When someone says you have this problem, what do you, what is your usual response? Either you deny it or sometimes you, after some time, accept it. But you always hesitate to go on medications because you would not like to have medications. Yes, mm -hmm. I understand. And it's true for me also. Even if I have a problem, I would not like to have because I believe as humans, we enjoy food, right? But then that should happen in moderation. A discipline is needed. And, and in today's time and era, I think we've forgotten. We don't think what we eat, right? Have you even a thought as to what you're putting in your body? No one thinks. Uh, pizzas, pastas, Western world, everything. I mean, you, you see all the fast food. Remember yeah. the word fast food. Yeah. It takes you faster. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yes. In the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that again. It takes you faster in the wrong direction. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and like I said, like I and what you said, I absolutely agree with it hundred percent is like moderation is the key. Like even if you're not living with any conditions, like excess of doing anything will affect you in some way or the other. So you have to have discipline and moderation and everything. Uh, okay, I think there's another question that uh, I'm type 1 since 22 years and I was having hyperthyroidism but considered it to be hypo with radio iodine therapy since I'm consistently gaining weight. Um, can you please suggest how to control it along with uh, following a diet or exercise? Well, I think this this people always have, uh, whenever we talk about lifestyle disorders, uh, people think mm -hmm. uh, you know, diet and exercise there's going to be a remedy for that. When we talk about thyroid dysfunctions, let me clarify that it's not a lifestyle disorder. It's not because of your lifestyle. 
the most common reason about three four decades back used to be iodine deficiency right our raw material is less so obviously the production is going to go down so t3 t4 is going to go down tsh is going to go up uh, that was the cause about 30 40 years back but back i think way back in 1992 unicef and uh, all the global bodies across the world decided to add iodine to everyone's salt so in some countries you have iodized salt in right. some countries you have iodized oil also so so you have abundant iodine and because of uh, adequate iodine iodine deficiency is no longer the leading cause of hypothyroidism it is autoimmunity again to do with hygiene why i would say is uh, things are going uh, autoimmune problems are increasing you can't do much mm -hmm. about it there are a lot of pesticides uh, you know environmental endocrine disruptors usage of plastics all these things have led to an increased incidence of thyroid dysfunction especially hypothyroidism so i would say that eating uh, lifestyle uh, maneuvers will not have an impact on thyroid dysfunction i uh, as far as the question of that individual was that uh, hyperthyroid radioactive iodine something hyperthyroid and radioactive iodine if you can repeat uh, so uh, yeah the question is the person is type 1 since 22 years and was hy having hyperthyroidism but it was converted to hypothyroidism with radio iodine therapy because they were con con the consistently is, gaining uh, weight the answer is pretty simple let us understand uh, this individual's problem is type 1 which is autoimmune and mm -hmm. hyperthyroidism which is also autoimmune now understand the gland is hyperactive so what you did you gave radioactive iodine radioactive iodine means iodine which is capable of emitting radiation right uh, since the gland was hyperactive whenever iodine went in because this this gland uses iodine as a raw material it grabbed all that iodine so when you gave that iodine radioactive iodine this gland which was hyperactive concentrated all that radioactive iodine within the it grabbed it because it was hyper functioning mm -hmm. and then because of radiation the gland shrank and shriveled in size so it reduced gradually and obviously the production which was high started reducing as the factory got as the factory gets destroyed so obviously here you landed up with hypothyroidism because of radioactive iodine and this was intentional because you wanted to get rid of hyperthyroidism unfortunately with radioactive iodine the risk of landing up with hypothyroidism is 50% 50 to 60% and this is what the aim is hyper is far more dangerous than hypo so now when the factory is got destroyed which you we intentionally done obviously the internal production has reduced and now you'll have to be on lifelong T3, T4 from outside, T4 dominant. I don't think in this case, this scenario, anything can be done except replacement. And hopefully, hope for a magic. Magics, wonders do happen. <laughs> okay. okay. So, um, yeah, I even would though. Actually, yeah, yeah, please, okay. please continue. No, Prashant, go ahead, go ahead. I'll take, take it up. Yeah, I was having one question in my mind. Is there uh, any correlationship between uh, thyroid and the lipid profile? Because a lot of people say that, you know, I'm thin, I cannot get uh, thyroid issues or something. But when they actually go and check their lipid profiles, their TG levels are way too high. LDL, HDL issues are there. Are there any correlationship between these and comparing with diabetes as well? Yes there is a very strong correlation as i said let's understand your lipid metabolism protein metabolism glucose metabolism everything is controlled by t3 t4 right just like i told you how glucose is utilized the rate at which glucose is utilized accordingly that is controlled by thyroid t3 t4 same thing the rate at which lipids or fat is utilized burn oxidation everything is controlled by t3 t4 so there's a very strong correlation in hypo hypothyroidism your triglycerides increase your ldl increases so
So whenever we come across an individual who's hypothyroid, your LDL triglycerides, total cholesterol is going to go up in these individuals. Once you start them on T4 and their T3, T4, TSH normalizes, even the lipids will come down by 15 to 20 percent, I would say. And in case after normalization of T3, T4, TSH, if the lipids are still abnormal, then that is due to underlying genetic tendency or obesity. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Dr. Girish. Over to so you. One of, one of the uh, etiological factors when we come across an individual with high triglycerides is first mm -hmm. sugars because even in diabetes, triglycerides go up. Number two, check thyroid because if PSH is up, the individual has hypothyroid, triglycerides are bound to go up. Third is something called nephrotic syndrome, where you lose a lot of proteins in the urine. That can also cause an increase in triglycerides. We need to treat them so that the triglycerides come down. Okay. Very interesting question, Prashan. Thank you for that. Uh, also, like if uh, we also touched a little bit about the genetic factor of thyroid things. Um, so if, if someone knows that they have thyroid issues in their family, uh, what care can they take? Like in terms of food? Or yes. Exercise or if, someone has, if someone has, uh, if someone has a, a family history of thyroid dysfunction, then the risk for having thyroid dysfunction in the other members is on the upper side compared to the general population. You would ask me how high is it uh, two times, three times? Answer is no one knows, but definitely much more than the general population. So you need to uh, be, you know, you need to do surveillance in such individuals. You need to periodically monitor thyroid levels, T3, T4, TSH levels more frequently. So uh, the general dictum, as I told you, was one, once in three years. Uh, for general population, maybe in such individuals, once in a year, you need to do it that frequently. Are and then, uh, second part, again, you asked me about some food pattern, lifestyle. Yeah. I would say praising the Lord. That's the only thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Obviously, but we I have less processed food. We're very frank. Uh, more processed food, more refined food lands up in problems. Okay. Of course. Uh, Less plastics. Yeah. I think that that works for both the ways, like even for thyroid and for diabetes as well, especially like uh, focusing. Like for diabetes, I honestly believe that you have like four pillars of management that need to take care of your insulin medication, your diet, your workout, and regular testing. And um, we have we have the a tough time. Like that. Sorry. Good sleep. Yeah, good sleep. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yes, like it's important. Important. It's yes, often absolutely. ignored, but it's very important. Yes. But it, it, this is where the tough part begins. Like it, when you talk about it, it feels very simple that, oh, it's just diet and it's just exercise. But when you actually want to implement it in life, it's when people become a little lazy. You need to prioritize what is important for you in life. I think uh, we've all... All of us, I'm saying, we need to prioritize, be a little bit disciplined. Obviously, when it comes to financial planning, work, you know, we can plan it out, do very, uh, prioritize our work as well as uh, other things. But when it comes to your own health, it's often ignored. This is where we need to work upon much more. I think the culture should change. This should come up with upbringing. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't think we have any more questions. We have taken I, all the questions. Yeah, Prashant. I have one on. question that is running in my mind. Actually, um, I wanted to understand one important thing, and for this is for viewers as well. A uh, lot of people are scared to take insulin with medicine and with thyroid uh, medicines as well. So, is there anything that you know you can help us clarify to understand? Because it's just that fear that comes in. 
Yeah, uh, Prashant, I think, uh, see, obviously, as humans, no one likes to take medicines. People don't mind smoking, people don't mind taking alcohol, but then when it comes to medicine, side effect hai kya? Yes. yes. Every yes. pill, every pill has a. People don't think, you know, when they smoke, when they drink so much, no one thinks about it. That time they don't think, you know, what are we putting inside our body? But when it comes to medicines prescribed by a doctor, they always think, because obviously that is on a regular basis. Versus this is occasional, hopefully for most pairing of you. I think uh, medicines understand that no one likes to give medicines as doctors. We don't like if if it was so simple to you know if things were so simple that diet and exercise would work for all then we would love to be a part of it but unfortunately uh, you know in spite of educating everyone talking so much about this people hardly follow diet and exercise discipline okay so in that scenario you're left with no option but to give medications now the medications when we give for diabetes these are oral tablets or injectables uh, when we talk about oral tablets most of them would either start producing insulin increase the production of insulin or amplify the effect of insulin or if the pancreas is not working like what you mentioned post pancreatitis if your body has no capacity to produce insulin then it's better to take ready made insulin from outside you have left you're left with no choice but sometimes you have to accept it and move on in life don't take it as a handicap when we talk about thyroid medications is pretty simple in hypothyroid believe me the tablet that we give is t4 thyrox it's pure hormone exact replica of what your body produces except the fact that it's synthetic so i mean i don't find any sense you know all of us drink water right water contains germs why do we drink water we filter it but we drink there are germs but we still drink why and for how long will we drink water have we thought about it no. you, your body needs it if it needs it it needs it so it, if your thyroid cannot manufacture t3 t4 it's better to take it from outside what's the harm you know uh same thing so i think uh, one should accept i think trust is the most important aspect if you've gone to a doctor obviously doctors by and large, I would say the prime uh, trust level is something which uh, is a very important aspect. If you trust your doctor, then I think, uh, and obviously I think most would, and uh, as a doctor also, probably our aim is the well-being of the other person. That's, that's, uh, that's my job, that's my responsibility, that's my karma, right? So right. Uh, if, 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 if I have to give something, uh, as a well wisher, obviously I would be, I would be prescribing what is best for that individual in my wisdom. Then trust and take it. And obviously, nothing in life is permanent. Let me tell you that. I I, I am of the firm belief that uh, nothing is permanent. Uh, there is a possibility we may get off the medicines with time. Uh, even for type one, if you look at the research being conducted especially in regards to islet cells and, you know, beta cell transplants. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we are hoping and that hope one fine day will be a reality, I would say. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Just uh, on that note, you know, one of the very common things that people talk to me when we talk about hypothyroidism is whether I should eat cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, soya, you know, people mm -hmm. always, because since we were talking of uh, food, yeah. is there any food? You know, hypothyroid individuals, uh, people on the net read, you know, they cannot take cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, soya. I want to make it a point that it is not true. Understand why people in good old days used to say that hypothyroid should not have cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, soya because so-called goitrogens they interfere with iodine absorption iodine is the raw material for production of t3 t4 if iodine is less obviously you'll end up with hypothyroid good old days iodine was less so therefore these things were not allowed were advised not to avoid but now everyone's salt is iodized so, so where's the question of iodine deficiency? 
So, mm-hmm. and most of these individuals would be on T4 ready-made end product from outside. So why why and we don't have uh, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, soya in large quantities. Nor do we have it on daily basis. So there's no sense in you know avoiding these food products. You know, on the contrary, in hyperthyroidism, they'll be beneficial because they'll slow down the production by reducing the availability of iod and in hypothyroid you can enjoy there's no such restriction i would say i think that was one of the questions that i was about to ask with the regarding the food because it's it's a very common misconception of like what you hear from your surrounding from your neighbors and then you just keep on following that so i think that helps also you talked about like less of plastic so what what exactly does that uh, mean so yeah, uh, you see, uh, plastic contains something called as uh, phthalates, okay, and uh, that is not good, especially in regards to thyroid for production of T3, T4. It slows down. Okay, so you know nowadays we use plastic bottles, plastic boxes, tiffins, mm-hmm. everywhere it's plastics. Yeah. That is something which we need to reduce. Okay. Okay, I think that that should answer uh, one of the questions in the chat. Okay, I think we are done with all of the questions, my personal and Prashant's personal questions as well, and all the questions in the comments. So thank you so much, Dr. Girish, uh, for joining us today and uh, giving such an insightful and wonderful uh, session. Uh, We'll be saving it on all, all our social media platforms. So if any one of you out there has missed on certain points, they can go and re-watch it again. It will be available on our YouTube channel in about uh, 30 minutes or so from now. And again, uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Girish Parmar from the entire Blue Circle Diabetes Foundation team. And um, we will be here again uh, next Sunday, uh, same time, 5 p.m. with uh, another workshop, uh, another fun, interesting topic to talk on. And I think that would be all from our side. Um, So this is me and Prashant signing off from today's workshop. Uh, We'll see you again soon. Bye. It's good to interact and spread awareness. Most yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.